Austin, your regular scheduled broadcast to bring you coverage of the funeral services for veteran and Austin icon Richard Overton. Overton died last month at the age of 112, and at the time of his passing on December 27th, he was the nation's oldest man. Well, the service at Shoreline Church has just begun. The speakers there will include Governor Greg Abbott and Austin Mayor Steve Adler. And exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, the old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. In Stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to pardon and save. I will never be true, it's shame and reproach gladly bear, then he'll call me someday to my home far away, when his glory My name is Richard Arvin Overton. I am
I'm the oldest war to veteran. I went in the army at 1940. I built me a house, and that's 45. That's where I've been ever since. It's a nice place to live. Yeah, I'm happy with my house. That's all I need. I just sit there and smoke sometimes 12 cigars a day. Maybe sometime more than that. Anybody say, what you smoking for? I guess, I guess it makes you feel better. I wake up one o'clock, I either wake up at two or three. Anytime I wake up, I just get up. I get me a cup of coffee sometimes. I drink about four cups of coffee in the morning. This morning, I drank about that much whiskey. I love milk and fish, corn, and soup. I love soup and ice cream. I eat ice cream every night. It makes me happy. I eat butter pecan. If you want to buy any, you buy butter pecan. I am. I'm giving you some of my secret to a long life. If you ever use it, if you don't use it, that's your bad luck. I may give out, but I never give up. Good morning, everyone. I think that's the life we all want to live, right? Um, welcome uh, to everyone. My name is Pastor Sam Monte from Shoreline Church here in Austin, Texas. And on behalf of our senior pastors and our Shoreline family and the rest of our community, we want to say thank you so much for being here. On behalf of the Overton family, I know they truly appreciate all your love and your support, your prayers, your words of encouragement, and uh, your presence here means a lot to them. So thank you so much on their behalf. It is a true honor for our church to be able to host uh, this great event, this great service. Uh, thank you to all the uh, elected officials, all our dignitaries, all of you who have uh, served in our armed forces and are serving. Thank you so much for being here. Your presence means a lot to this family and to our community as well. Uh, we gather as a community to, uh, to do one thing, to have one thing in mind, to celebrate a life that was lived really well and a legacy that will live on even before, beyond our lifetime. And, and maybe to uh, also reflect and to examine our own lives, and maybe we would live just a little bit differently and love each other the way God would want us to love each other and serve each other as the way we're supposed to, uh, and to celebrate service, to celebrate love, and to celebrate friendship. And I pray that we do that here today. May we be inspired to live our lives in a way that truly makes a difference in the lives of others, because that's really what we've learned the last few 112 years. That's really what matters, to love each other. Uh, just as Mr. Richard Overton did for many, many years and with so many people. So thank you so much for being here. Would you please pray with me as we continue this service? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence here with us. Lord, we thank you that we are not alone when we walk through moments like this. Father, we thank you for Mr. Richard Overton. God, thank you for the gift that he has been to this world, to our families, to this community. Father, be with this family. I pray that you would comfort them and wrap your arms around them. Father, help us as a community to encourage them, to keep them in our prayers, Lord God. We open our hearts to the touch of your spirit. Father, we pray that this family, Lord God, would know your grace, your comfort of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, and that you would communicate to them what the human heart and the mortal tongue cannot. Father, we honor you and we welcome your presence. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Volma Overton, who will come and speak on behalf of the family.
May 11, 1906 until December 27, 2018. 112 years of an extraordinary, extraordinary life from Richard Overton. Good morning. On behalf of the Overton family, our extended family, cousins, relatives, dear friends, and most importantly, Richard Overton. I extend our heartfelt thank you to everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Governor Abbott and First Lady Cecilia Abbott for all that you have done for Richard. Thank you for inviting him to your home for his 109th birthday a few years ago. That really meant a lot to Richard. He was very aware of, of, of that, and he was honored. That due to your support, his final resting place was going to be in, in the sacred hallowed grounds of the Texas State Cemetery, just a few, a few blocks from his home. Thank you, Governor. Gentlemen, uh, thank you, sir. General Murray, Command Sergeant Major Cosby, thank you for your service and thank you for all that you've done for this remarkable old soldier. Richard was extremely proud of his service in the Army. He was very humble and honored to be part of the fine men and women of the greatest generation. Richard was a soldier's soldier. Mayor Adler, Sir, on behalf of the uh, entire Overton family, thank you and the entire city of Austin for all that you've done to support Richard over the years. Richard Overton Avenue in East Austin will forever be a reminder to your great city to always reflect on the kind, gentle man that Richard was. Thank you so much, sir. Senators John Cornyn, Ted Cruz, and Representative Roger Williams, thank you for the Senate and House resolution honoring the service, life, and legacy of Richard Overton. Thank you, Commissioner Bush, for your memorial proclamation. And a thanks to the entire staff of the Cook Walden Funeral Home. Pastor Rob. Pastor Sam, Richard was a man of God. The word absolute comes to mind when I think about Richard. And uh, Richard had an absolute loving relationship with God. From time to time, you would hear Richard uh, audible, in audible conversation with God, one of which was while entering Arlington Cemetery, Arlington National Cemetery. He asked God, why me? Looking around, why am I still here? Look at all those soldiers out there laid to rest. Why am I still here? Pastors in this house of God, thank you for giving Richard this beautiful final farewell. We very much thank you. We very much appreciate the outpour of support and love given to Richard. As his cousin, as a family member, I, like to, like so many others, have been blessed to uh, be a part of his life, and he a big part of our lives. One thing I would like to say is what a blessing Richard has been to his entire family, to the Austin community to his great state of Texas, to the United States of America, and to the world. <laughs> Richard had a special gift of sharing his unconditional love with everyone, and that gift of love came back to him tenfold. He was truly loved by so many. 
Richard has lived a blessed life. We are just so grateful for all the people who have made a difference in Richard's life over time. Over the last two years of Richard's life, he had a team of wonderful caregivers who took care of him. I would like to thank them, all the caregivers, for all that you've done for Richard, and thank you for the quality of life that you gave him that he so fully deserved. And an outpouring of thank you for the outpouring of support from everyone who helped support him have, to be able to have 24 7 care in the comfort of his own home. And a very special thank you to Martin Wilson for your. Martin gave many years of his life to being around Richard and to be there for whatever Richard needed for many years. Thank you, Martin. Let's keep Richard in our prayers. Let's remember and pray for our remaining World War II veterans. Over 16 million of them left the United States to fight a war in Europe and the Pacific theaters. Freedom was a beautiful word, a word that Richard never took for granted. More than 400,000 of his fellow comrades gave up their lives to keep America the land of the free and the home of the brave. These men and women, so many of them never lived the ripe old age of 112. So many, sadly, never got to marry, never got to see their mother or father again. This generation, the greatest generation, they could have given up during the war. They could have lost hope and lost the war, but they didn't. They didn't know what defeat was. They never gave up. They, as Richard did, loved America so much. They were dedicated and honest, and with God's help, they won. They came home winners. They got married. They put their duffel bags away. They never complained. They built homes. They rebuilt America. They raised their children and made this country the greatest country on earth. So remember when you go home and go to bed tonight and you turn off the light, your lights, you're able to do that thanks to the World War II veterans. The greatest generation that God has ever created. It is important that we remember those who did so much to keep us free. God bless you, Richard. We love you. I want to introduce the governor. The governor's going to make a few mar remarks, and uh, he's coming up this way. Today we salute a remarkable America, a soldier, a survivor, a jokester, a joy, a man from Texas. A man of God. It is an honor to be here today with Richard Overton's family and with his friends to celebrate an extraordinary life, 
of a man who touched the lives of so many here in Austin, in Texas, and across our entire country. Richard Overton is a Texas legend. He is an American icon. He loved this nation, and he put his faith in God Almighty above all else. You know, we celebrate Richard Overton not because of how long he lived. Instead, we celebrate him because of how he lived his life. You know, it's simply amazing to consider how the world changed so much during the years of his life, especially during the time of his service during World War II. When you think about it, we gather for this celebration today in the bustling city of Austin that's infused with advanced technology, vibrant music, and Franklin's barbecue. <laughs> but as we gather today, we can barely comprehend the strife that gripped the entire world during the war in which Richard Overton fought. It included massacres, the Holocaust, death from starvation and disease, and the use of nuclear weapons in war. And yet, we are free today because of patriots like Richard Overton. We are thankful also to be blessed with the presence of so many people today who have served in our United States military and worn the uniform. If you've ever worn the uniform of the United States military, would you just wave so we can thank you for what you've done along with Richard Overton to keep our country so great. Richard's service, where he came forward to serve our country in World War II, shows that he exemplified what it means to be part of the greatest generation. He voluntarily enlisted in the Army. He served in the South Pacific, not in search of glory or some type of gratitude, and not because he was forced to do so, but instead out of a sense of duty for the nation that he loved so much. My wife Cecilia and I were honored to be able to host Richard Overton at the Governor's Mansion for his 109th birthday celebration. We had a cake, but we didn't have enough room on the cake for 109 candles. So we settled for three. <laughs> At 109, Richard displayed his quick wit and joyous spirit. He was there that day in a wheelchair, and I had shaken hands with him, and the grip felt like the grip of a Dallas Cowboy football player. <laughs> Should I have said Houston Texans. But he, he challenged me to a wheelchair race. <laughs> and I got to thinking, man, how embarrassing would it be for me to lose a wheelchair race to a man 109 years old? <laughs> so I thought it might be smarter just to sit around and chat with him. <laughs> and I asked him the question that everybody asked him, and that is, what is your secret to living so long? And his answer was immediate and unequivocal. Cigars and whiskey. <laughs> now, I did not know until today that it was also butter pecan ice cream. <laughs> well, as we celebrated his birthday, we talked about his life, his military service, 
our mutual love for Texas, and of course, we talked about whiskey. But what stood out the most was his genuine kindness and compassion. It was the sheer joy that he had just in living and the humility and grace with which he lived. Well, for, for me to appropriately pay my regards to Richard, I searched for Bible verses about cigars and whiskey, <laughs> but I came up empty. What I did find, however, was this verse from the book of Colossians, which is a fitting way to celebrate the life of Richard Overton. Therefore, as God's chosen people, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. God was talking about Richard Overton. That is the way that Richard Overton lived. That is the way Richard Overton will be forever remembered. Thank you for joining in the celebration of Richard Overton. May God bless you all, and may God forever bless the legacy of Richard Overton. I have a quick presentation to Volma Overton. In Texas, we consider, as you all know, we believe our state is better than any other state. <laughs> Anyone who knows much about our Capitol knows that we proudly assert that our Capitol Dome is bigger and taller than even the Capitol Dome of the United States Capitol. And as a result of those things in our Texas pride, we consider there is no higher honor that we can provide to anybody than a flag flown above our Capitol. And so what I want to present to Voma Overton and to the entire family is this flag that I had flown above the Capitol in honor of the life and legacy of Richard Overton. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Governor, Ms. Abbott, General Murray, Volma, and the Overton family, Mr. Overton will be missed. The Austin area has lost everyone's great, great, great grandfather. You know, he's. So he celebrated his 112th birthday here recently, uh, a year ago almost, on May 11th of 2018. As you've heard, veteran of, of World War II, America's oldest man, uh, the third oldest man in the world, an absolute national treasure and institution uh, here in, in, in our city. Born in 1906, the, the, the grandson of slaves. His family worked the cotton fields in Bastrop County. He joined the, the war effort uh, in 1940, 42, uh, when, he was, when he was 36. He had a love for smoking cigars and, 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 and a sip or two of Maker's Mark. You know, during his final years, he, he had uh, uh, breakfast with President Barack Obama in the White House on Veterans Day. You've heard, as I heard from him, 
that he celebrated his birthday with birthday cake in the governor's mansion with Governor Abbott. He hosted cabinet secretaries, former presidential candidates, and, and Governor Rick Perry on his front porch, as so many of us had the opportunity to come and visit with him. The city of Austin honors him with a street named for him. The Austin VA honors him with a very special place, the, the Richard Overton Healing Garden. He was Grand Marshal in Austin's Veterans Day Parade. And this lifelong Texan will be buried today in the same cemetery as many of our state's most famous politicians and veterans and founding fathers. And he's going to be buried next to his, his cousin, uh, Voma Overton, at the Texas State Cemetery in Austin. Gives us a chance just to, to, to recognize and, and remark on the contributions of, of not only his service in World War II, as the governor spoke, but, but his family's service here in, in, in Austin. It was his cousin, Volma Overton, uh, who, who was a well-known civil rights activist in our community. He was president of the NAACP chapter from 1962 until 1983. You know, the Overton family, best known for efforts to end racial segregation in our public schools. Uh, the family uh, helped bring the, 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 the federal lawsuit to desegregate Austin's schools. Uh, and true to form, it was one of the Overton family members that was the lead named plaintiff uh, in that lawsuit. That was a, a landmark case that took... Yeah, we're gonna, we're going to applaud Deidre. You know, that landmark case uh, took 10 years to get resolved. It spanned uh, the 1970s. Uh, but it brought into our community the, the, the political backing, financial backing, of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, the United States Justice Department, the Mexican American Legal Defense and Education Fund. Overton family participated in the March on Washington in 1963 and the, and the Selma to Montgomery March in 1965. The family. <laughs> honored by the LBJ School of Public Affairs, a family that advocated for single family, single member districts uh, in Austin for better representation on the east side of our town. We're going to miss Richard Overton, or as I always called him, and most of Austin did, Mr. Overton. Uh, he aged with such grace. He had such patience with the thousands of people that just wanted to be near him, to touch him, to speak with him. He allowed us to, to come together around him. He allowed us to come together to recognize what is best of us, to, to celebrate our history, to recognize that history, to honor those that fought for us, to honor elders in our community, wisdom that comes of age, you know, he, he participated in the, the Honor Flight program. Uh, and I know that it was important to him and to the family. It's a program uh, that, that takes veterans uh, from our community. And in 36 hours, it, it takes them from Austin to the airport, on a plane, into Washington, D.C., so that veterans together, as a group, uh, can go tour some of the, the memorials that exist in our city uh, and then rapidly back to the, to the airport and then, and then back home. Uh, it is an amazing experience to be part of. To be with Mr. Overton, to be with uh, veterans uh, in, in our community as they line up and walk or, or most, most usually ride wheelchairs through the airport to their gate. 
and to see everyone in the airport stop what they were doing, even those that were running to gates because they feared they were going to be late, to see everyone in the airport stop what they were doing and create a, a, a gauntlet, a rows of people that applaud and celebrate veterans as they move through the airport. It is difficult not to cry. Uh, the arrival in Washington, D.C., debarking from, from the planes, have the same thing happen as people stop to be with the veterans as they're marching and walking to the, or riding to the memorials to have the communities uh, and the folks in the area stop to applaud. Mr. Overton gave us that chance to, to do that every time that we were, every time that we were around him. I had the honor on behalf of our community to sit with him on his porch uh, during uh, his birthdays and on, and on Veterans Day and express our common gratitude for, for what he had done and what he stood for and how he gave us the opportunity to, to be our, our best selves. I want you to know that, that together as a community we gave him uh, our gift of uh, bottles of Maker's Mark. So I want you to know you participated in that. <laughs> and I talked to him about the city and about how things change and how cities change and the challenges that we, <clears throat> that we still have. Uh, on the day that, that he was uh, uh, the, the, the marshal of the Veterans Day parade was also when we were dealing with uh, or trying to figure out how to deal with a parade that still had a Confederate flag in it. Uh, and we talked about the, 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 the balance that life needed to be able to honor what was special uh, in, in our community like our veterans and that memory, but also to be ready to, to seek and to fight for change so that our community could be at its very, at its very best. On behalf of the community and, and, and all of you, I, I had the opportunity to visit with him in the hospital earlier trip when he had pneumonia. I want you to know that he knew that this community was praying for him and thinking about him and pulling for him. Uh, I, I also knew that he was watching the coverage on TV and was a little concerned about how he would look on camera. Um, <laughs> but, but, we, but we celebrate and, and remember Mr. Overton uh, for everything that he did and for everything that he stood for but also because he brought out the best in us. It was impossible to be around that man who was gentle and respectful and kind and not be gentle and respectful and kind in return. It was impossible to be around Mr. Overton and not be the very best that each of us can be individually ourselves. Mr. Overton is going to be missed because he made us remember what is true and right. And today we celebrate him. Governor, Mayor, uh, to the Overton family, thank you very much for letting the United States Army participate in honoring and recognizing this great American. Um, if you look at the percentage of the time that Tech Sergeant Overton uh, spent in the United States Army, it represents a very small percentage of overall what we've heard described as a tremendous life. But I think it represented a very important part of his life. And I've learned a lot of things today. Um, the numbers of cigars have changed significantly over the last three or four days that I've gotten to know the family. The amount of whiskey has changed significantly. Uh, and I think the story will continue to get better over time. And I also thought that Tech Sergeant Overton had one World War II hat, but I see in the video that he probably had quite a collection of World War II hats in his closet. 
I did not have the honor of knowing Richard, and I think that will be my loss for the rest of my life. I have participated in numerous uh, visits from World War II veterans to the World War II Museum, uh, I'm sorry, Memorial, and met some just tremendous, uh, tremendous Americans at the World War II Memorial and other places when I was stationed in Washington, D.C. Those of you that have spent some time in the service, this is probably the first time you've seen this uniform. Uh, this is a prototype of the Army, of the uniform the Army is going to, and it is very, very close to the uniform that Tech Sergeant Overton wore back in World War II. And it's a recognition of that greatest generation, the foundation and the freedoms that they have provided us uh, since that time. So we've gathered today, not only from this great city and this great state, but really across the nation, to give back a little bit to Richard uh, for all the things he gave to us. A lifetime of friendship, wisdom, and kindness, but also, and it's important to remember, the blood, sweat, and tears that he shed to protect the freedoms that we all so much enjoy, and in many cases, too many Americans take for granted. In our nation's darkest and In one of our nation's darkest hours, he chose to answer the call. And his service has never failed to inspire us, and his service, and that of so many more, will never ever be forgotten. Richard's service resonates in the ways that may not be readily apparent at first glance. His story is one of a brave and selfless soldier struggling to accomplish his mission in combat, if for no other reason, is so that he and his friends could come home. But it's also the story of an African-American soldier in what was, unfortunately at that time, segregated units of the not-so-distant past, overcoming discrimination through professionalism and demonstrated excellence to ultimately right injustices, both in uniform and in our society. Finally, it is the outside contributions to America's strategic victory in World War II made by aviation engineer battalions, which he was a member of in particular. Richard's outfit was the 1887th Aviation Engineer Battalion, and these units were specifically trained to rapidly construct advanced airfields close to, or in many cases, behind enemy lines. But they also had the skills to maintain and improve in infrastructure of all types. Their symbol was the bucking bulldozer, a rather ferocious-looking bulldozer with eyes, teeth, and wings holding a piece of pierced steel planking the material that was used to construct hundreds of thousands of runways, taxiways, and parking aprons across Europe and throughout the Pacific. The engineer riding the bulldozer wears a shovel on his back, and he carries a rifle in his hand. They were masters in the art of camouflaging airfields and constructing defensive works, such as revetments to uh, disperse and protect air aircraft. They specialized in rapid runway repair, quickly returning airfields that were damaged by enemy bombing attacks back to service. And finally, to protect themselves from both air and ground attack, aviation engineers were trained and equipped for combat as well as construction. Each unit included trained riflemen and machine gunners, as well as bazookas, anti-aircraft and anti-tank guns, grenade launchers, and half-tracks, as well as anti-tank mines. And Tech Sergeant Overton himself was cross-trained in just that way. And although his occupational specialty within the 1887th was a truck driver, his service records clearly indicate they had an additional qualification, rifleman, and not just any rifleman, but an expert rifleman. Richard was an expert shot. <laughs> Richard was an expert shot with a rifle a skill that I'm sure he had honed through years of hunting as a young man in Bastrop County. Avi aviation engineers were in high demand in both the European and the Pacific theaters. General Eisenhower himself stated that these units were among the most important units in the United States Army. Without them, the Air Forces could not keep pace with the advancing ground forces, and soldiers on the ground would lose the advantage of close air support and aerial resupply. These units also played a vital strategic role by quickly building airfields in remote locations that were capable of supporting the long-range bombers that were so important to the war effort. 
Everyone here today remembers Richard for his unwavering positivity, a relaxed, happy day approach to life. However, I believe it's important to also remember that Richard's life was not always sunny. Tech Sergeant Overton faced more than his fair share of storms. Segregated African-American units at that time, such as the 1887th, not only faced the dangers and difficulties inherent of combat, they also had to face a toxic mix of racial discrimination and low expectations from the units they were part of. And all those, those units across the United States Army and really across all of the services were set up to fail. Richard and his comrades overcame those challenges with valor, <laughs> with valor, with expertise, and with professionalism and with dedication to duty that stand as a testament to their dedication and their patriotism. After their own initial training was complete, the 1887 shipped out to Seattle, Washington and arrived in Pearl Harbor, where Richard saw for himself just exactly what we were fighting for. The view of the damage, the vividness of the still recent battle made a very deep impression on him. It still resonated half a century later. And he, but he didn't have long to ponder it. Shortly after arriving in Hawaii, Richard and his teammates in the 1887th headed out as part of a convoy through the Marshall Islands toward whatever destiny awaited them. In his recollections about that time in the Army, Tech Sergeant Overton pulled no punches about the harsh realities of the combat he saw. In an interview with USA Today in 2013, Richard said, war is nothing to be into. You don't want to go into war if you don't have to, but I had to go. I enjoyed it after I'd went and come back, but I didn't enjoy it when I was over there. I had to do things that I didn't want to do. Family and lifelong friends remember Richard's recurring nightmares, which he faced with his own mix of optimism and quiet toughness years before medical sciences had come to grips with the reality of post-traumatic stress. Make no mistake, the combat that Richard and his comrades in the 1887th Engineer Aviation Battalion faced was searing. At the Battle of Angaur, as part of the assault on Playu, Army forces faced Japanese defenders deeply entrenched in tunnels and caves carved in the limestone rock. The fighting there bore all the hallmarks of our campaigns in the Pacific, some of the most vicious and bloody fighting U.S. forces have encountered in our entire history against a determined and suicidal enemy. On Angaur, the 1887th, supported by Navy Seabees, built an airstrip in the midst of the fighting. In a tactic that would be seen again in places like Iwo Jima, the Japanese defenders used tunnels and stay behind forces to infiltrate behind American lines, leaving no safe place on the island. Richard remembered stalking Japanese infiltrators behind the lines with his rifle and dueling with Japanese snipers hiding in trees, a deadly game of cat and mouse in which his marksmanship skills learned here in Texas proved invaluable. Although Angaur is only three miles long, it took the United States forces 36 days to capture the island. All but 50 of the 1,400 Japanese defenders had been killed. In taking the island, U.S. forces suffered more casualties than they inflicted. But even as they mourned their losses, there was no rest for Tech Sergeant Overton in the hard-fighting 1887th. They move, quickly moved on to prepare and maintain other vital airfields in places like Guam and Okinawa, putting Army Air Corps strategic bombers in range of the Japanese home islands. And it was on Guam that the 1887th was deactivated shortly after the Japanese surrender. And Richard, Tech Sergeant Overton, achieved what every soldier before and since has hoped and prayed for. He came home. Richard's service on the battlefields of the Pacific was heroic, but it extended beyond his years in uniform. Service in the Army is something that lasts a lifetime. It, transists, it transcends generations. And he was rightfully proud of his service. To the end of his life, as most of you in this room know, you could find Richard sitting in front of his house with one of a variety of World War II hats on his head. He used to say that he had the biggest family in Austin, and after meeting most of you at the funeral home a couple nights ago, I now believe him. 
but that's also true in more ways than one. Since he enlisted in 1942, Richard was a part of a family of millions of soldiers across the years, united by the oath we take and the shared experiences that, to a very astonishing degree, remain the same no matter when or where you serve. Richard's service sets a stage, creating a legacy for those of us that came later, those of us that wear the uniform today. It was a legacy of honor, professionalism, and of courage. And it is a legacy that those of us who wear our nation's uniform strive to achieve and strive to not let down our veterans each and every day and each and every morning when we wake up. So with that, I will bid a final salute to a brave soldier. Richard, your service is remembered and it is deeply appreciated by a grateful nation. And on behalf of our Army, past, present, and future, Godspeed and Army Strong. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It has been an incredible privilege to hear about the life of Richard Overton. As a church family, we welcome all of you, governor, mayor, general, to the entire Overton family, and all of you, friends and extended family, and all of you who have served in our armed forces, we welcome you here today. There is one phrase that we have heard over and over about Richard. He lived the kind of life that we all would like to live. And I don't think there's a greater compliment than that. He loved God. He loved his family. He loved his friends. He never met a stranger. He was quick-witted. And he was uniquely courageous. He was honored by the President of the United States for his service to our country. Our governor is here. Our mayor is here. Many state senators and congressmen and women are here. All of the news stations are carrying this service today. And it all speaks to the incredible legacy of this true American hero and Texas legend. It's never easy to lose someone that we love and we respect. So this morning, in the final few minutes that we have together, I want to turn our attention to the Lord, to God, who is the giver of all comfort and the restorer of our souls. And I would like for us to take a moment in the book of Psalms, Psalm 23, one of the most famous scriptures in the Bible. The author of this passage was a man named David. Before becoming a king, David was a humble shepherd. But in this psalm, David took a metaphor from the world he knew best to explain his relationship with God. He started out, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God is like a good shepherd. David made the courageous decision to put his complete trust in following God as his shepherd. And God was a good shepherd to David, as he is to all who put their trust in him. God was also a good shepherd to Richard. Richard embraced life in a relationship with Jesus Christ. As we've heard so eloquently spoken here this morning, Richard was incredibly strong. But as strong as he was, he came to realize that he could never be strong enough on his own. Richard was incredibly courageous, but he came to realize that no matter how much courage he had, he wasn't courageous enough on his own. There was something missing. 
he knew that there was something broken all around him. In his service to our country and our community, he became aware that there is an evil and a pain and a suffering in our world, and there needed to be a reason for that, an answer for that. And he came to believe that the evil that's in our world is a direct link to people turning away from God. And with a heart full of gratitude, he came to understand that Jesus came into the world and died upon a cross for the sins of mankind, for his sins, and to make what was wrong in his life right. Romans chapter five and verse eight says, but God so loved the world and demonstrates that love, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Jesus took the punishment we deserve. He died in our place for all of the wrong things we have ever done or ever will do. He did that for every single one of us. And all we need to do is receive it. Ephesians chapter two and verse eight says, for by grace, you have been saved. It is the gift of God. And that's great news for you, for me, for Richard. I heard enough here this morning about his propensity to love cigars and whiskey. You don't get to heaven on that. You get to heaven based on the goodness and the beauty and the grace of our God. And what a gift God's amazing grace is. The gift of forgiveness, the gift of a new identity, the gift of God's presence in our lives, and the gift of eternal life. Richard made Jesus the Lord of his life, and because that, he knew what David was talking about in Psalm 23 when he wrote, he leads me beside still waters, and he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Sometimes life is hard and we struggle with pain and difficult circumstances and the grief of losing people that we love. But God can take us from our darkness and bring us to a place of rest where we can lie down beside quiet waters and into the light where our souls can be refreshed. We have suffered a loss today and that pain is very real. Scripture tells us that Jesus knows exactly how we feel. He knows our sorrows and he's acquainted with our grief. He wept at the tomb of Lazarus. Some of those tears, I believe, were for friendship, but I also believe that some of those tears were for us today. Jesus knew the heartache that death would bring to the human heart. And that's why Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you and I will send to you a comforter, the Holy Spirit. Sometimes things happen in life that we don't completely understand, but we can draw encouragement from his promises. And one of the greatest promises of all is found in John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, and he who believes in me, even though he dies, will live. Richard put his trust in Christ. And because of that, he is right now beholding beauty beyond our comprehension. We must realize that in the midst of this time of mourning, there is good news that through Jesus, death is not the end. Heaven is real and it's an incredible place. No more death, no more goodbyes, no more grief, no more sorrow, no more sin, no more evil, and no more pain. In heaven, we will walk on streets of gold. In heaven, there will be a family reunion. We will be reunited with those who have gone on before us. In heaven, we will experience a peace and wonder that is more than we could ever imagine. And most importantly, we will be with Jesus, and we will finally see the great love of God in all of its glory. You see, those who have allowed God to be the shepherd of their lives will have real peace. David wrote, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? 
because I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David knew that there was a peace in dying for those who are believers. And that unshakable peace comes when we realize that we will be with God forever. For all of us here today, it would be wise to come face to face with the fact that our lives do not last forever. Although Richard at 112 was probably beginning to wonder. <laughs> the Bible says that our life is but a vapor, appearing for a short time and then passing away. When David shared that God was like a shepherd, it raises a question for all of us here today. Have you put your faith and confidence in the one and only shepherd who can save and protect you for all of eternity? All of us, like sheep, are in need of a shepherd. Without a shepherd, we are prone to wander. We've all made mistakes. We've all fallen short. Every one of us has failed. But for those of us who put our faith in Jesus Christ, God comes down and forgives us and rescues us and like a shepherd brings us home. Today is the funeral of Richard Overton, where we remember, where we pause and reflect on a life lived incredibly well. But it is more than that. It's a graduation. It's the day we celebrate that Richard, a child of God, left this life and is now enjoying paradise with his savior. If Richard could speak to us right now, I think I know what he would say. To all of his friends, he would say thank you for all of the love, all of the prayers, all of the support, and all of the good times. To his family, he would say it in his unique way, but he would say the theme, live with courage, keep the joy. I love you, heart and soul. But he would also want me to say this, I believe. He would want me to let you know that heaven is real, that Jesus is who he claimed to be, and that the message of God's amazing grace is true. I think he would want me to tell you that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him would not perish, but have eternal life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the incredible legacy, their heroic contribution of Mr. Richard Overton. Father, we know that he's with you, dancing on streets of gold. Father, I pray that to every heart that's longing and missing this incredible man, Father, that you would bring your comfort and your peace. But Father, I also pray that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, doesn't know you as the shepherd you are, that they would find the courage here today to put their trust in you and live for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Then 
Jesus saves my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul. Son not sparing, set him to die. I scarce can take it in that on that cross my burden gladly bearing. sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, then the sing And take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In a humble adoration And then Proclaim, my God, how great Thou art! Then the sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou! How great thou art, then the sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, on behalf of this family, once again, thank you so much for being here. I know it means a lot to them. Your presence uh, is really, really something that has touched their heart. I want to continue to uh, encourage you to continue to pray for them in the next days and weeks and months to come. And uh, remember just to live a little bit differently and honor this great legend that we celebrated today. 
Uh, this concludes the services for today. This portion of it, we will proceed over to the Texas State Cemetery uh, in procession with police escort. If you are traveling with us, please uh, turn on your headlamps and also uh, your hazards, your blinkers will be wonderful. Uh, so we will all know that we're in a procession together. I'm gonna ask you to remain at your seat, but please stand uh, and remain in the place where you are. Just stand to your feet for just a moment. And uh, please remain in this area where you are until the family and the casket is, uh, leaves the sanctuary. We're gonna escort them out uh, towards the coach and then you will be dismissed when we exit the sanctuary. Thank you so much. You just saw the funeral service being held at Shoreline Church for Richard Overton this morning. As they just mentioned a few minutes ago, mourners will now head to the Texas State Cemetery where he'll be laid to rest next to his cousin, Volma Overton Sr., who was the head of the NAACP in Austin in the 60s. A military flyover and a three-volley salute by the Honor Guard is scheduled for two this afternoon. Join us back here at 10 tonight for a look back at Richard Overton's life and all of the people he touched over the years. Now we'll take you back to your regularly scheduled broadcast. This has been a breaking news alert from KXAN News.